Hello, you're watching Hot New X, and today let's talk about a recently finished era in Chinese drama, 追风者 War of Faith. This is a 38 episode drama that has just finished airing on both CCTV, eight satellite television, and iQIYI. One interesting thing to note is the scriptwriter of this drama also wrote the drama that aired not so long ago, also a very red drama, Wen Tangmang, that I have briefly mentioned during my weekly video. The drama is mainly set in early 1930s Shanghai, although for the later part. It does move location into other places. I have finished watching all thirty-eight episodes, so this is a final review. I haven't given a score to a drama for a while. A lot of dramas, I can't even bring myself to score them. For this one, I think a very reasonable place for it to land would be between two and three gold mines among the Mingguo setting espionage drama that involves the usual element that you would see in this type of Chinese drama. So this one probably will come out on top. So before I even go into talking about the details of this drama, you should already anticipate it will be a very positive review. We start the story from the perspective of the main character played by Wang Yibo, who is a young man in his early twenties, very good at math, coming from Jiangxi Province, small village, who has a lot of talent. So he wanted to try out his luck in a big city. He goes to Shanghai, and because of his talent, get noticed. By the newly founded and reorganized Central Bank's leader, played by Wang Yang, so he employed Wang Yibo's role and become a teacher to this young man. And unbeknownst to him, his younger sister, who also works as a very important engineer at a firearm factory, is actually a Communist Party member, played by Li Qing. She became a member a long time ago when both the siblings were studying in Germany, and she has been working for the underground Communist Party organization in Shanghai right from the beginning of our story. These three people in work in life will constantly meet and get entangled, and they will go on this journey of war of faith, as the title suggests. And in terms of how red it's eventually gonna become, well, it's just gonna become very, very red. And like I said, I really have a very positive response to this drama. Therefore, I'm gonna first talk about things I think it could improve on. So the first thing about this drama is originally it is filed for as a 40 episodes drama, and if you watch the drama, you can tell at certain points they probably cut stuff out, particularly towards the last, let's say, 10 episodes. You'll see that happening. Quite frequently, so the end result is that you have a 38 episode drama, which means at least about 80 minutes of content got cut out in the final one, compared to probably their original script. I do find the last third of the drama has a little bit narrative pacing problem, although. I believe all the actors use their own voices. They did change lines, so in the dubbing, sometimes you'd see that the mouth does not fit the line spoken. It's not that. Nice to experience. The second thing that I think it could do better is its balance. It's not so perfect in terms of the chunk of story that happens in Shanghai, and then the chunk of the story that happens after our main character leaves Shanghai. And the plot that happens in Shanghai has a lot of built up because of the level of detail that it provides. It really consolidates the character and their behaviors and the plot. It makes everything really believable. And you enjoy, and you get into the narrative really easily. As they move away from Shanghai and go to Jiangxi Province, that is already late in the story, and they didn't spend that much time building up details of everything of the plot that happens there. So things start to get really scattered, undefined, written, and played on a very superficial level compared to the Shanghai part. Therefore, it becomes lesser juicy, I'd say. Than the first part of the drama, so that's why I don't rate it to three full gold mine. And in consideration of what we've gotten this year, 2024, and then in the last couple of years, same genre drama, this drama still comes out pretty much on top. So now let's talk about all the good things. Point number one, one of those relatively high quality iQIYI productions. This drama is produced also by iQIYI and CCTV, so it airs on these two platforms. It's also produced by them, plus a couple of smaller drama production companies. And when I say compared to same genre drama in recent couple of years, I'm talking about dramas such as Panijo, The Rebel, 
such as with Ai Yi Mi, the Li Yifeng and Jin Chen drama before Li Yifeng got cancelled. That comes down to the overall production quality, attention to detail, consistency of style. For example, if you look at the camera, the color, it has an extremely coherent look. These days in Chinese drama land, you often come across dramas that are extremely volatile. Like it doesn't even look like the same drama from shot to shot, from scene to scene. From one scene's lighting to another, the color grading, things go all over the place and it looks extremely amateur. At least this drama doesn't have that problem. It has good consistency, it's been planned and well executed. Then on the basic level, production quality, I really appreciate that they create the 1930s Shanghai, the Mingguo Shanghai, in a way that's at least I think convincing enough for audiences to see its visuals, its costumes, the details of fabric, texture, lighting, down to little props, even what gets printed, what business actually existed in early 1930s Shanghai, that you would see the signs or on newspapers and print out some things that that's actually been researched. So it has a quite detailed groundedness. It's better than a lot of very cheaply made Mingguo drama. It also doesn't have the problems of having people dressed up or made up in a too contemporary style that looks like 2020s instead of 1920s. There's no skin smoothing, thank heavens. And the drama does put the atmosphere of a scene over how can we make the actor look prettier. Lighting makes sense in a dark environment, you have enough contrast, sometimes you see the texture of the characters imperfection on them and it just makes it more realistic and believable. All that tells you it's a serious production, it's not idol production, although it has a very popular idol actor as the main lead, it really feels it's realistic enough for the 1930s setting. Point number two, as an espionage drama, as a page-turning nature drama, and as a dramatic drama, it's very watchable. From moment one, it's fast. The episodes flow really well, there's no wasted moments, no dragging out long conversation scenes, and every character shows up for purpose and every scene happens for purpose. So it's unlikely you will ever get bored watching this drama. Number three, just emphasizing on something I've already talked about kind of in point one, which is I can tell this drama has been researched quite a lot. At least 60 to 70 percent of its content is focused on the early 1930s Shanghai, finances, trades, business with foreigners, banking, stock market, all the volatile things that did happen. You can tell the scriptwriter has done quite a lot of research. The different powers within the government fighting against each other and at the cost of destroying little ordinary people's lives. And if you are relatively well read, and learned of the Mingguo history, you will appreciate the effort that the script has gone into to create very believable characters with a very realistic historical backdrop. Number four, something I highly appreciate and I think it's one of the most successful thing this drama has done, and making it actually quite successful on satellite television, not on web, because usually espionage drama of this type doesn't get very hot on web. Most people, when they watch it, when CCTV has it on satellite television, would be watching it on the television because they usually watch it with their parents and even like grandparents' generation. So this drama actually did super well on satellite television, more than it did on web. I think one of the reasons that it did really, really well on satellite television is it has created this believable enough ensemble of supporting roles. The actors use Shanghai dialect occasionally to bring you into the story. If you come closer to the narrative center, you have more important supporting roles and they're also vivid, each having their own very complete and well-written line. For example, the landlady character, who starts as this typical landlady of a Shanghai Nongtang and later ended up as such a tragic old woman. For example, the rickshaw puller, who is the good friend of our male lead character and his tragic personal storyline. For example, our male lead character's childhood arranged marriage girl who showed up halfway through the story. You thought she's gonna come out as the love interest challenger, but totally not. She's her own right woman and so interesting and filled with life and color. 
Or, for example, the secretary of Wang Yang's character Xiao Huang, who is the classic "My boss and my teacher loves me most. I am his best student." And somehow, suddenly, somebody airdropped out of nowhere and challenged my role. I no longer am the most favored. A really complicated peer pressure thing with that role, and his whole storyline that also really goes to the very end. For these supporting roles, they're all very vivid, well written, complete, consistent, and have their own arc and have their own narrative function and interesting to look at, and well casted and well performed too. Together, really help you situate yourself into the story narrative, its historical background, and its believability. And then it does have one of the best anti-hero bad guy I've seen in espionage dramas. In recent years, Lin Duizhang, Lin Qiaozong, played by the actor Zheng Heyang. Last time you saw him was in Journey to Love, not so long ago as the Bad Emperor. He is the bad, bad head of an espionage organization who just murders and kills and tortures people and do all types of horrible things. But he somehow shouldered the only pure romantic love storyline of the whole story. He is actually the Lian Ai now, who is ruthless. And cruel, but at the same time has the most passionate and romantic love line of the whole story. And he's such a layered, complicated bad guy that he does get what he deserves. But along the way, you do see how he struggles and tries to reason with himself. And he's also clever, talented, strong enough so that he does pose a real threat to all the good guys, so that the good guys don't win so easily in the story. In an espionage drama set in Ming Guo time, in recent, let's say, five years, I think he's the most successful bad guy. Finally, we have to talk about the three main leads. I would say this drama is successful in another big way. Which is it created these three main characters played by Wang Yibo, Li Qing, Wang Yang, Wei Ruolai, Shen Jingzhen, Shen Tunan. You can trace how they ended up the way they are back to their origin very convincingly, step by step. Show you why they are the way they are and why they do the things they do. None of them ends up being Jia Da Kong character, which can often happen in this type of drama. Jia fake. Da grand, not grounded. Kong empty. For this type of writing of the very specific time setting in Ming Guo, for characters to get contacted by Red, how they can get pulled into it and gradually take the steps. Often writings don't do a very good job of show you how that progression happens and convince you that it makes sense for this specific character because of his or her personal experiences in time and history. They ended up there. This drama actually did a really good job of writing a very convincing development line for all the three characters. I also highly appreciate that they wouldn't so easily make everybody turn red. For example, the male lead character, his elder brother is actually a Communist Party member. Although he wasn't aware of it, but when he found out, as a normal person, he's like, "You're my brother, so you know I have to protect you, but I don't care about what you're believing in. I'm not that interested." Even when he finds out the female lead character is a Communist Party member, he's like, "I'm cool. I, I I don't like to get into politics and stuff. And honestly, I just wanna be a good employee to your brother because I really appreciate your brother's appreciation of me. So as long as you sister does not give trouble to your elder brother of what you do, I." Don't care and don't try to pull me into your business. I'm not interested in that either. Also, Wang Yang's character. He's a very self-conflicting and constantly arguing and fighting with himself character. He also doesn't just turn. You know, overnight, his whole progress and process of turning is so grueling. And painful, and you can so empathize with all he has to go through to get to that point. And the actor plays it so well. I know I spoiled it here for you, but you know this type of drama it has to end that way in Chinese drama land. Now the final thing I have to single it out because it's a big surprise to me, and definitely the thing that hooked me to the drama at the beginning. Finally, Wang Yibo can act. Like he really understands, he's playing a character. It happened from scene one. It's not like as he's playing it, it gets better. He really is in character right from the start, and it really surprised me. And it's funny that this drama went live on March the twenty first, and just a couple of days before that, it was my March live stream on my channel. We did talk about, I think, during the live stream with people chatting about Wang Yibo and his acting, and I was saying from all the things he's. Being 
dramas, films, whatever that I've watched him playing, I have the feeling that he doesn't enjoy it. It's like he doesn't really want to do it, but it's a job that gets him money, and he's the money-making horse of his company. He's the only person who's literally making all the money for his company, so he has no choice. He has to do all those things, and he's also a shareholder of his own company, so it's like he's working for himself. Technically speaking, all of that considered, he probably has no choice because right now in Chinese entertainment business, acting is the place where you can get most exposure, money, and your sort of place in the entertainment business and fandom, all that. But during that live stream, I said I feel like he doesn't really enjoy acting. He doesn't know why he's doing it. He's just doing it because he needs to do it. This drama, I have a strong sense that he probably did start enjoying playing a role. At least to himself, a quantum leap has happened in his career as an actor. The moment he comes on screen and start to play this young man who got in Shanghai and knows nothing about what's going on, I'm like, oh, interesting. He's different. <laughs> He's like acting now. I wasn't expecting that at all. Not even when I watched the film Wu Ming that happened not so long ago. You know, I wasn't impressed. But this time it's different. And in the drama, when he's acting opposite, very good, proper. Veteran, well-established actors. He doesn't shine away. He doesn't look like he doesn't belong there. He really fits into the story, and for large chunks that he has in this drama, where he needs to deliver big speeches and very emotional, explosive sequences, he actually did a really good job. His line delivery also improved quite a lot. Now you cannot say if that's just from now on it's all going to be like this, or is it just one lucky strike that somehow happened because of you know, all stars that are aligned for this production. It's still too early to tell. Personally, I definitely don't want it to be actually that. I want it to be that he. Has finally entered the threshold. I hope it's a sustainable quantum leap, and from now on can do more interesting, versatile roles and become a proper actor. So that would be everything I can think of after watching 38 episodes of War of Faith. 追风者 Hope that's useful for you to decide whether you should test out this drama if you haven't yet. It's all there. It's all done. So、uh, no possibility of suddenly rotten tail or weird surprises anymore. Thank you for watching our new ex. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.